Hello again people, I've been wanting to do a N64 2023 update video just for my collection for a while. Um, I actually don't know how much I've added to it since the last one I did, so let's let's just get on with it. I currently don't have a table in here or anything, so my plan is to use the top of this Xbox fridge. So there might be cuts while I move the camera in and out. So I'd start with the largest thing. It's the only boxed 64 console I have is this uh, limited edition gold like gold no one with the uh, gold controller um this was bought years ago in a charity shop but like the controllers i think it's still sealed in the bag in there and most of it was all still sealed inside it had just been opened to have a look um so yeah that's that's just as it stayed but it's a shame that somebody once opened it i don't know if it was opened by the shop or not you never know so but yeah it's pretty sweet i keep it in that box protector to keep it a bit more a bit more protected um, I'll show off the other, only, I don't have too many consoles, I've got my usual one, this is one I use all the time, uh, just your standard, it's had a grey, it's a bit filthy because it's, this is continuously in use, so, and the other one that I use for Japanese and when I get some, some American games, uh, this was supplied to me by, uh, he now goes by Jedi Buzz, doesn't he, <laughs> this blue Japanese one, this is this is a really nice looking system. And the last bigger box thing, before I cut this off and move the camera and all that jazz, is a giant box of Pilot Wars. So yeah, it's got the, the it's got a rumble pack in it, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it says on the front, uh, I'm an idiot. It's surprisingly weighty to hold it arm's length. But yeah, that's that's all the, the consoles and bigger stuff. I do have loads of different coloured controllers and things. But I couldn't really be asked to dig them out, to be honest with you. So I will stop this now, and I'll go to the games because it's only the games people really want to see in it. So yeah, back in a second. Right here goes. Let's go on with the first stack of games. This might take me a lot of cuts of getting up and sitting back down to grab stuff, but never mind. I also don't know how I'm going to do. I might just have to pop them in front of the camera quickly, then switch them out because I don't know if I can stack this on top of this <laughs> fridge very well. But at first, it's a copy of Forty Winks. Pico Interactive uh, release game, so it was never released, but uh, the company went ahead and finished it and chucked it out on a cartridge. And yeah, this is it. This is the PAL sleeve of it. Um, you could buy a PAL one or an NTSC one. Uh, if you take this sleeve off, though, it does have the like NTSC artwork underneath it. Let's see if I can see how many we can get on the fridge, shall we? Uh, that's not going to do much, is it? I've only got a tiny bit of light in this room. Uh, up next is what came after Goldeneye. It was 007, The World Is Not Enough. Um, yeah, not... It's alright. It's not It's not Goldeneye, put it that way. So... As you can tell, I try to get everything boxed on the uh, 64. This is one that I spent a lot of time playing as a kid. Uh, I used to play at a youth club and got really good at it. Um, I need to go back and give some more time to it again. Which is 1080 snowboarding. As you can tell, I keep them all in these protectors just to keep them in good nick. But, well, I say good nick, they're not in the best nick anyway. But to me, it's just I need them boxed. So I'm slowly but surely trying to uh, get boxes for the cart stuff I have, or I just shift it on and then buy a boxed version. Up next is one that I haven't actually put much time into. I just tested to see if it worked. But I played this on the PS1. And I really enjoyed it on the PS1. It's quite janky, but... Well, I played a hell of a lot of the demo on the PS1. Not not the full game. So I do need to give this a shot on the N64 properly. It's A Bug's Life. Yeah. It's one that I always forget even came out on the N64. So... Let's uh, clear them off and get to the next lot. Alright, up next is a... I think this was a Japanese and PAL release only, which was Air Border 64. Yeah, it's another one you, one you don't really see very often. Um, it's not super pricey. Uh, boxed copy like this. Just over 100 quid usually, I think. Um, but yeah, it's like a... Well, I couldn't say snowboarding. It kind of reminds me of um, things like Airblade and stuff on the PS2. Uh, but it's incredibly bad. Like, incredibly bad. Like, it must rival Superman 64 for bad. Up next is Our Marines, Project Swarm. 
yeah, this is a, it's pretty much Starship Troopers the game, isn't it? Just first person shooter, shooting up bugs. It's alright. Also on the PlayStation. See if we can get four on air again, shall we? Uh, this was one I got for free when I, well, it wasn't free. For a very, very small amount of money. It might as well have been free. <laughs> when a local game shop shut down, they had this in their window. Um, it's in pretty rough shape, but it's a good game. Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, flip them around so you can see them. Yeah, everyone knows this. It's a little 3D, 3D collectathon platformer. To be honest, I'd recommend playing it on Rare Replay now. And the same with this one, the sequel, which is Banjo Tooie, which has this giant grip sticker thing on the front of it. I should probably try and get that off. Um, I think that's where CEX stuck a sticker on it, since it's the Australian one. And I, I don't know. Do they take the Australian one usually? This, I think this is the most common version of it, the Australian one. Ah, four. Four is the maximum on this thing, I think. <laughs> on to the next lot. Up next, absolute class little hidden gem of a racer on the N64. One that won't ever get a re-release anywhere because it's a licensed title by EA. Which is Beetle Adventure Racing. Recent, this is one of my recent pickups. But I played the hell out of this as a kid. Absolutely loved it. Loads of little like shortcuts and stuff to take, so all the races always seem a bit a bit different. Then we've got Blast Corpse. Another one you can uh, play on Rare Replay now. It is fun. It's just a little game where you destroy stuff to let her like it's a it's like a lorry truck thing carrying a missile, make it all the way through, so if it hits a building it explodes. So it's, it's almost like a little puzzle game, but more action based. I'm having to sit in a very weird angle. This is <laughs> this is this is an ab workout, and I'm not somebody who has abs. Right up next is Body Harvest. Yeah, it's made by uh, it was made by the people who became Rockstar North DMA. So basically, it's like a precursor to Grand Theft Auto. Really, it's like an open world where you can get in cars and stuff, but you you fight like big alien bug things and stuff. It's all right actually. It's one of those ones that people think is a bit of a hidden gem i don't know if that's the one that uh you can't complete though there's a game i remember playing you get to the end and there's a bridge and you can't cross it because you can't get over something and you could only do it with a cheat cartridge was it that i can't remember up next is this is one i've actually yet to play i've put it in to see if it works i bought it when i was walking past the cex because it was in real nice condition was only up as boxed which was a Bomberman Hero. To be honest, most of those markings are actually on the protector, not the game. But I, I don't know if this is... Is this the one that's more like a platformer? I don't know. I'll have to give it a proper go. Too many games, not enough time. That's what it is. Okay. Back in a minute with some more. Oh, God. Got to get my legs back into place again. This is going to hurt like elf. <laughs> End of this, my legs are going to be asleep. Okay, so up next, this is what I got sent by CEX as classed as mint. And I would not consider this mint, but it's very good condition. Just buck bumble. So yeah, it is very good condition. Apart from that, where is it? Sticker damage there. That's not mint. But never mind. The price difference at the time... <laughs> With something ridiculous like eight quid boxed and forty quid mint, so I paid forty quid for something they could have sent me for eight quid. But never mind, never mind. It's in the past. Uh, that's a it's a little like kind of flight game with a really catchy uh, <laughs> intro tune. It's, it's pretty good to us. It, it does come up as uh, one of the the more playable sixty four games. When we when we talk about playable, this one isn't very playable. But Carmageddon sixty four. So yeah, it was a, a port of like at the at the time very controversial racing game where you could run over pedestrians. But this one is they've I think they've changed definitely to is it zombies with green blood instead of people and the AI is absolutely dreadful. They can't make it up hills and stuff. Uh, it looks like you're completely and utterly underwater the entire time. It controls like shit. So yeah, <laughs> is this all right? 
<laughs> it's all right if you like bad games. Let's put it that way. I do like playing the odd bad game. So here comes another one. This one, uh, the girlfriend picked me up and she ordered it from CEX and it, I think it turned up in a just like a, a jiffy bag and she apologised to me because it was absolutely battered. But it's all right. As I said, I can get upgrades if I ever if I ever complete the set. I can get upgrades and then it'll be fine. But for the time being, I'm good with it. Which is Castlevania. But yeah, this was this was not in a good shape when it <laughs> rocked up. It did look like it was more more damage was done by being in that um, bloody what they call bubble. Not bubble mailer. That's what Americans call it, isn't it? Jiffy bag. God, I can't fucking think today. Um, up next is... There's two of these on the system. I've only got the first one. They're like little platformers where you do things with your tongue. It's a chameleon twist. It's quite fun, actually. It's not, not anything people should be running out to buy, but yeah, it's, it's all right. If you like your little cutesy platformery kind of games. Up next, we've got one of the ones that people, a lot of people want to get in their collections, is Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. Yeah, luckily this one, this one's in real nice shape. I found this in a in a retro game store. I think it was before it closed down. I can't remember. It's a proper weighty box though. This one, for some reason. I'm right. The manual's absolutely chunky as anything. But yeah, it's a little. What's a cutesy platformer? It is cute. But it's very adult with adult themes, bad language, lots of violence. Yeah, it's, again, it's also on Rare Replay. That'd be your best place to play it. Um, one, it looks better on there. It controls a bit better, I thought, on the uh, Rare Replay. And it's not going to set you back a couple hundred quid. Well, they won't if you buy them. It'll be about a hundred quid loose cart, I think it is. Uh, up next, we have Cruise in USA. Yeah, a little, little racer. Not too bad. This has been the back of my uh, bookcase is broken and it's held together with a bit of tape and this this has been stuck on it. So now it's sticky. That's annoying. I'll clean that off. Oh this 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 one's bad. <laughs> it's Daikatana. Yeah, it's a little um like it's it's a shooter, but you've got AI controlled like people with you and they just don't don't do anything they die and they, all your missions just end and yes yeah, it's, it's not good never never look at that it is it is most definitely not a 90 percent first person shooter i think the pc version got like i had a fan community that fixed it and it still wasn't great so up next is one of the one of the best kart racers on the n64 diddy kong racing Yeah, everyone's, everyone's played this. There's a version of it on the DS as well. Um, it's kind of the same. I think it's got a few changes. I can't remember. It was a long time ago since I played the DS one. But yeah, it's got this little adventure mode and things, hasn't it? So it's, yeah, it's just a fun little kart racer. It is, it is a more solid game than Mario Kart, I believe. But going back to it, the frame rate isn't as good as Mario Kart. But still, still a good game. It's a must own. Up next is Donkey Kong 64. Yeah, one that's supposed to come bundled with the expansion pack. So, again, rare 3D collectible platformer game. Way too many collectibles in it. it going back to it now, it's, it's all right. But if you want to go for 100% completion on it, it's an absolute ball egg. Up next is, uh, actually, <laughs> this has been re-released now. On pretty much everything so play it there rather than the 64 just doom 64 um, just because this version is incredibly dark no matter what you do it just looks really dark so playing it on uh, all the modern systems is your better better option but yeah it is doom it's doom 64 is its own game so it's not like a yes yeah, it's, it's a brand new doom game basically well, not brand new now is it this is back from fucking early 2000s we got Duke Nukem 64. Again, 
this had a lot of changes. It is kind of Duke Nukem 3D, but they took a lot of stuff out and changed a lot of the uh, the ways the the levels look because Nintendo wanted it to be a bit more family friendly. So there's no boobies in it. There's no uh, I don't know certain certain references to like any kind of nudity, drugs, all that kind of stuff, all removed. And then we've got the N64 exclusive one, which is Duke Nukem Zero Hour. This is one that I had pre-ordered for so long and I kept ringing them up saying when's it coming out when's it coming out because it kept missing its release date but yeah it's all right oh you'd been playing a lot of Duke Nukem Time to Kill at the time and I was hoping it'd be a bit more like that um yeah it, it, it kind of plays that way but I'd say Duke Nukem Time to Kill is more crossed with like Tomb Raider while well, this is more just solid third person shooter but it's a good game I did enjoy it really did enjoy it Okay, up next we have Extreme G. Yeah, it's a little futuristic racer with like bikes. It's really fast. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty good fun. There's a sequel to it. Um, there's a, one of the local shops to me has a boxed copy of it, but it's really battered, so I haven't I haven't been tempted to pick it up. I don't know if it's still a seven ninety nine game. But <laughs> yeah, I I like it. It's good fun. This one isn't great. <laughs> from Jim 3D. It's not as bad as everyone says. It's just a 3D platformer of Earth from Jim. Like, yeah, as a lot of these N64 games were. It's it's not horrendous, but it's it's like a, it's like a six out of ten game. This next one, one that I actually really enjoyed as a kid, um, which is F1 uh, World Grand Prix. I wasn't into F1. I'm still not into F1, but I do play a lot of F1 games because I really enjoy them. And I always thought this was like impressive looking for for the time. It's, it's, it plays really solid as well. I recommend it. Up next, the one that everybody, well, everybody's playing it now because it's just been re-released. Is Goldeneye. Everyone knows this. It was like the greatest first-person shooter ever at one point in time. So. Oh, when I started this, I was, I was going to start opening this up with a... It's not the biggest N64 collection in the world, so it won't take too long to get through this, but this, this is going to take me a while. I have more N64 games than I thought I did. It's not a brag, I genuinely thought... I, didn't, I don't realise how much these shelves hold. Right, up next is one of the few RPGs on the system. There's Holy Magic Century, also known as Quest 64 on... Uh, in America. But yeah, it's a really short RPG. If I'm already, you can have it done in about two hours. But it's alright. Uh, this, I bought this because I think this was 99p boxed. So, International Superstar Soccer 64. I do want to get aim for a complete 64 set. But, these kind of sports things, these aren't, aren't my kind of thing. I don't like football. Up next... One that everybody needs. Oh, I can actually see myself in this one. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> Zelda, Ocarina of Time. So, yeah. Everyone knows what this is. Been released on 3DS now. But, and, well, pretty much everything that Nintendo's released, it's it's been there. Um, oh, my, the next one in the, uh, in the alphabetical kind of thing is up on the shelf. I'll do this then, because this, this was going to go somewhere random. We'll chuck in... Pokemon Stadium now. So it's the big box, comes with the transfer pack and stuff. Let's play your Pokemon games uh, through the TV, well, red and blue. Um, it, yeah, it also lets you import your Pokemon and like battle them. It's just battling Pokemon and some like mini games basically. So get that one out of the way since it, it I don't, I've never found a box protector for it. It's a bit annoying. I'll have to try find one. Right. Gonna have to get some more shit off the shelf. Alright, back with another stack. I'm running out of space on the floor around me. I should I should put some of these back, shouldn't I? Never mind. Up next is Majora's Mask, another one. Been re-released quite a few times on all different things. GameCube, which has like emulated versions. Big, big tear in the back, but never mind. I'm not a mint collector, as I said. If I ever get the entire set, I can always upgrade. But all the contents are in there. I don't aim for, I aim for complete in box. 
uh, but if I can't get a manual for something, it's not the end of the day. I'll, uh, I'll just track one down later or sell these ones on later and just get, get ones which have them. So I'm not too fast. There's another one I actually, I think this is a surprisingly good little kart racer. Which is a uh, Lego racers. You can like, I would say you can build your own cars, but it's, it's, it's quite rudimentary now with the amount of customization. But for back in the time, like back in the day, it actually had quite a bit of option to, to build stuff. But then again, you couldn't, looking at little Lego carts, you probably can't go much more in depth with it, really. Uh, up next is Load Runner 3D. It's a 3D version of an old, I don't know, was it an Amiga game or something? Basically, yeah, you run around little, like, levels, collecting orb things to open a, pretty much a gate to escape. Tell you what, I was trying to think, because I, I picked this one up recently. I was trying to think what it reminds me of. It reminds me of a game called Iggy's Wrecking Balls on the uh, 64, which I don't have. But that, that you're running around, like, kind of 2.5D areas. Just, yeah, that's a weird game as well. I don't know. Can't explain it. I've only played it a couple of times. So, I'll get it at some point. Then we've got the kart racer everyone has to have. Mario Kart 64. Yeah, great, great game. Really is good. This 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 copy's pretty damn clean. This was with that uh, N64 I bought in that charity shop. So, I, I was impressed by that when I saw that. But that was, that was a long time ago. You don't find that kind of stuff in charity shops anymore. And just to chuck it in there, when I once, I picked up a box Jaguar ages ago, and the, the guy for some reason had this as well, but I might, I might let this go. He had a copy of uh, Mario Kart 64, but the Australian one, which is uh, in really nice shape. But I, I don't need two copies of it, I'm, I'm not a variant collector or anything, so, I don't know. It, it will stay in the collection for now, but it may go at some point. I need to move stuff. Right. Up next we have Mario Tennis. Yeah, it's all right. Little tennis game with Mario. <laughs> yeah, this this was a, I think that was a charity find as well. I really do miss the days of finding 64 stuff in a charity shop. Uh, this is another recent pickup. I had this car only for ages and I shifted that on. Uh, I think I... I think I sent it to Ink Northerner, I think. That's who I think I, I remember doing it to. But it's Mischief Makers, so I've got a box one now. Yeah, it's a little 2.5D kind of platformer. Um, well, I don't know if I can call it 2.5D, really. It's it's mostly 2D, with the odd kind of enemy that's a bit more 3D in the background. So well, that would It would be 2.5D then, wouldn't it? I'm just being an idiot, I'm waffling. Right. Where am I going now? This stack. I'm getting confused. Uh, one that a lot of people don't like, but I enjoyed this because I had it when I was younger and played the hell out of it. it. Was Mortal Kombat 4. I think this was the first time it went like fully 3D, like 3D models and everything. Um, it looks incredibly dated now. And, but I still enjoy it. I, I do, do enjoy it. But that's, that's nostalgia coming through. And... Mortal Kombat Trilogy, yeah. This I used to play the hell out of at a youth club, at school. Um, it was it was great. Again, you won't find this for two pound fifty anymore. <laughs> but the box of this isn't isn't in the best shape, but still good. It's still a good game. It's it's got like pretty much. Has it got a complete roster up until that point? I can't remember. Can't remember. Sometimes I'll edit out me uh, moving these games. Depends if I'm still talking or not. All right, another one. This was what had I been playing? I was playing something on the PS One at a mate's house. I thought I need a good racer for the uh, for the sixty four, and I picked up this. It was MRC uh, Multi Racing Championship. It was um, yeah. It I'll tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like the way that. The original Sega Rally was. So you've got like three cars and three tracks or something. So it, it didn't feel like it it had much <laughs> much longevity. But 
<laughs> playing it today. I actually really like it. It's quite fun. Um, there's, I think there's only one track that has a shortcut on it or anything. But as a little arcade racer, it's all right if you want to put put it on and play for half an hour. You, you see the end of it by then, but never mind. Uh, this is one that I picked up from Facebook a long time ago. I've only ever put it in to see if it works. It's not my kind of game. Oh, you say it's not my type of game. That's right, you can't see it in the thing. There's two of these games sat above MRC at the moment, but you can't see it. <laughs> it's NASCAR 99. So yeah, NASCAR. Driving in circles. I think, I can't remember. On Facebook it cost me like a couple of quid or something. I can't remember. It'll be in a pickups video somewhere. Uh, this one is pretty pretty fun little game actually. We've got Penny Racers. Again, it's a little uh, arcade racer. Um, it it's part of the is it Coracu, Choracu, and Gadget Racers and all that kind of thing. So I think they technically come under RPGs, like racing RPGs. Um, but I can't remember if this one was more just just racer. I, I picked it up not long ago and I haven't put much time into it, so I can't remember. But I'll get back to it. Get back to everything. Say that I'll. I'll be long gone before the time I've played everything. <laughs> Up next is uh, Perfect Dark. Yeah, it's like the pseudo sequel to Goldeneye, isn't it? After uh, Rare lost the James Bond license, so they made this. Very good game. Again, it's on. Uh, I think it's on Rare Replay, and it's on 360 and stuff. Play it there first. Oh, play it there. Controls are better. Um, it, it's cr it's crisper. Runs much smoother. The frame rate isn't the greatest on the 64, but yeah, it's still a good game. If you want to play it on original hardware and all that jazz. Another one I played the hell out of is Pilot Wing 64. Yeah, it's like a sequel to the SNES uh, Pilot Wings. So you do like um, parachuting and gliding around and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's really chunky, this box. I don't think it's supposed to be in there, but when I bought this, it's got like a fat player's guide or something inside it. And I'm pretty sure there was no versions that, that came with that. I think somebody just put it in there. But, not going to complain. Up next is Pokemon Snap. So yeah, it's a little photography game. Like, it might as well be an on-rail shooter, but you take photographs instead of shoot things. And, like, throw, like, apples to piss Pokemon off, basically. There's a new version, new new Pokemon Snaps, the sequel to it on uh, Switch. But I've yet to play that, so... I'll have to uh, give that a shot at some point. I'll have to get one. Uh, up next is a fighting game. We've got Rakuga Kids. Yeah, it's kind of made to be, like... It looks like, almost like kids... Kids drawings fighting. Yeah, it's alright. It's a pretty pretty fun little one to be honest with you. It's not gonna set the world alight and <laughs> anything, but it's yeah, that's N64 fighters go, it's alright. Uh up next, great game. We've got Rayman 2, the great escape. I may have done this so I can fit more on this time. Yeah, little little platformer again. This this has been released on pretty much everything now. Um there are differences between the versions. I think the, is it the Dreamcast one which is the best one to play? I can't remember. But yeah, if you like little collect-a-thon platformers, go for Rayman. It's good. Uh, up next is a racer that I've only ever tested. I haven't actually given much time to. So I might have to do this on Twitch at some point and play this. Which is Roadsters. So yeah, I don't know much about this one. All I know is it's a racer. I think it was one of those ones that... Again, when I was after a racer, it was one I always wanted to pick up. I think I was playing a lot of Gran Turismo around my mate's house, and I wanted something of similar quality, and there really wasn't, was there? Next we have Rocket Robot on Wheels. This is a, this is a good little game, this. Uh, it's by Sucker Punch. Are they the people that did? They might be the people that went on to do... Um, I think it was Infamous. Did they do that? But yeah, really, really solid little um, 3D platformer. That it, it has, it kind of, 
it's odd to say it feels like a sucker punch game. The way it moves and jumps and things, it feels like their stuff. Don't know if that's a weird thing to say. This one is one that the girlfriend bought me because she loved it. I, I cannot stand this game. Which is Rugrats Treasure Hunt. It's a party game, like a board game, which has absolutely zero point. There's, I don't understand it. You either, you just walk around a, a board picking up cookies or dust bunnies. And it's whoever picks up the amount of cookies wins. But it's completely random, so there's no skill involved. It's, it's bizarre. Up next we have uh, San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing. Yeah, another little racing game. I do not have, uh, was it Rush 2049? I do want that, but I don't want to pay the money for it. I have it on Dreamcast, I could play it there. <laughs> then we have Rush 2 Extreme Racing USA. Yeah, again, not, not in the greatest shape of this box, but uh, I think it was a CEX pickup. I think I had to, when we were back playing that shelf game, I think that's why I had to get that for. And then we have another racer. This this one's quite fun. It's kind of reminds me of uh, like RC cars and stuff, but they're not the it's scars or S cars or whatever the hell it, it's pronounced. But yeah, it's all right. Again, I think that's on uh, PS One as well. So all right, let me move these bits. Ugh. Okay, next is one that, this is my preferred way of playing this game, on the 64, Shadow Man. Yeah, imagine it as being, like, horror Zelda with guns. It's a bit janky. It has recently been re-released on stuff like PC and PS4, so, yeah, there's a physical on PS4 as well. Then we've got South Park. It's a little South Park first-person shooter. Um, it's not, not the best, but I, I loved this when I was in school. It was good fun. It was stupid. It was, I don't know, the, the weapons are just insane. You can piss on snowballs and throw them at people and things. I, I still kind of find it quite fun. Then we've got South Park Chef's Love Shack. It's a South Park quiz game. It's nothing special. There is one more South Park game that I have not got, but I will get, which is South Park Rally. Need to track that down. I've got, I've got it on PS1, but I need the 64 version. Uh, then we've got Space Station Silicon Valley. Another one done by uh, DMA, who became Rockstar North. So, people who made Grand Theft Auto. Uh, it's like a little kind of open worldy kind of thing. You drop, you're like a little microchip and you walk around and you can get inside these animals and become the animals to like solve puzzles and collect things it's a bit strange but it's a good game and i'm pretty i don't know if it's the, just the american copy or if it's all of them but that game doesn't boot properly with an expansion pack um i've always taken it out when i play it to make sure i might do a test to see if it does go funny with the expansion pack in then we have star wars episode one battle for the naboo To be honest, the condition of this looks alright, but if you get real close to it, it isn't. When I bought this, I couldn't see it in the uh, advert, well, the pictures on eBay, but it's absolutely coated in sellotape to keep its strength, and I don't like that. So one day I'll get a, an upgrade for that, but for the time being, it'll do. It'll do. Should have just brought a table up here, shouldn't I? Would have been much easier. Then we've got probably the, my favourite Star Wars game ever, Episode 1 Racer. Yeah, it's a little pod racing game, so yeah, it's quite quick. Well, it was quite quick for back then. It still has a sense of speed, but it's not not as fast as I remember it being. That's been released on PS4 and stuff since, and I haven't, I haven't picked it up on there. There is a sequel on the PS2 though, um, which might actually be quite controversial since I'm following it with this. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. I imagine people saying this is a much better game than Racer, but never mind. Yeah, it's uh, if you, what is it, Star Wars: Shadows of the Empire? You start that off with the Battle of Hoth flying around. Basically, they they made that into a full game. Uh, then we got 
the one everybody needs on the system, Super Mario 64. To me, this is still the greatest 3D uh, platformer ever made. I I can replay this over and over. I absolutely love it. Then we have Tetrasphere. Yes, it's a... <laughs> imagine, imagine Tetris in a sphere. Kind of as the name says. It's very bizarre. But it's pretty fun. We have, up next is Tonic Trouble. This works on the same uh, game engine as Rayman 2. So basically it's just another 3D collectible kind of platformer game, but pretty good. We're getting towards the end. Oh no, I'm knocking stuff over. I see a bitch to put these back. All right, up next, another racer. We have Top Gear, Overdrive. There's three Top Gear games, I think. Is it four? There's this one. And there's this one, Top Gear Rally. As you can tell, it's a rally version. <laughs> there's Top Gear Rally 2, I think, and there's Top Gear Hyperbike, which I don't have. And next we have Turk 2, Seeds of Evil. Played the hell out of these as a kid, the Turk games. Um, yeah, you're Turk, the dinosaur hunter, basically. Um, a Native uh, American guy walking around absolutely murdering dinosaurs. Like, drilling out brains, blowing their legs off at the knees. Surprisingly violent for an N64 game. Then we've got Turok Rage Wars, which was like the multiplayer kind of version. I didn't really like this one that much. Honestly thought I had Turok 1, though. I know I don't have Turok 3. I could have swore I had Turok 1. What done with that? Might be cart only. I'm not going to show off the cart only stuff. I can tell you what they are at the end. They're... they're Locked away somewhere. Up next we've got V-Rally 99 edition 99? Is it 99 edition? I don't know. Yeah, little rally game. It's alright. I always think I always well, I always think V-Rally games are more like pinball games. You bounce down the track like mental. Then we have this also was this was also with that N64 that I bought in the charity shop. Is it Wallaley Country Club True Golf Classics? I'm not a fan of golf games really. They're not the worst sports things to play, but they're they're very very slow and boring, I find. Then we have Wave Race 64. Yeah, a little, little racer on uh, jet skis. Actually, a really good game. I, every time I see this, it reminds me I need to try Wave Race Blue Storm, because I've never played it. I think I do have it, though. So I should play it. They have Wet Tricks. Again, it's a little weird little game, this one. Like, puzzler kind of thing. I don't really know how to explain it. I haven't played it in a long time, so I can't actually remember how it goes. <laughs> oh shit. Then this is one that I always find strange that there's, there's a version of this on the 64, because to me this is Sony franchise, but. Which is Wipeout 64. We mentioned this. Uh, well, I mentioned it in the comments of a video the other day on the, the TMB podcast. They're doing one about N64 games. And I mentioned that. I always thought that was more of a Sony franchise. Then people reminded me there's Ridge Racer on the uh, 64. So <laughs> that's that's just it's bizarre that those two are on there. I don't have Ridge Racer 64 though, sadly. Up next is World uh, World Driver Championship. This is what was being touted as like the N64's version of Gran Turismo. Um, to be honest, I haven't put much time into it, so I probably should. It, I think it got some decent reviews. That's it say on the bottom. It says reviews there. But, no. Well, we shouldn't listen to them anyway. We looked at the fucking front of Dai Katana, which said it was 90%, didn't we? And onto the final little stack. So we've got WCW versus NWO World Tour. These work on the same, like, game engine as uh, the WWF No Mercy and WrestleMania games. Not these ones. WWF Warzone. <laughs> There's Warzone and Attitude, and this these these aren't great. These don't handle well at all. But there's, there's a charm to them that I do like going back to them because I played a lot of them as a kid. Here is WrestleMania 2000. This is probably the wrestling game I've put the most time into. Got a little lenticular bit on the back, which moves. It's quite cool. 
I don't have No Mercy though. I do need to pick that up. Then we have Xena, Warrior Princess. It's a pretty bad game. Um, I only found out the other day that this and the... Is it the PlayStation version were different? One's like a... I think this one's the fighter. The 2D, like, not 2D. Like, actual, like, one-on-one -on -one fighter. One's like a four-player battle something. I don't know. It sounded bad. Then we have Yoshi's Story. I really like this. I remember when it came out, people slated it for the graphics and saying that it was a bit too short and a bit kiddie. But I enjoyed that about it. I like I like playing the easier types of games from time to time. And I remember sitting there and 100% in that quite a few times. I'll, do some, I'll check this in in a minute. I'll do this now actually before I thingy. get to the next, the last three bits that I have. I do have a boxed rumble pack as well. That was with the uh, N64 I got from that charity shop that I showed earlier. Then we have a couple of Japanese games. I cannot tell you what this is called, I cannot remember, but it is a baseball game. So yeah, there's loads of these baseball games that come out in Japan. With their little chibi kind of characters. Then we have... Why can I not remember what it's called? Sin and Punishment, isn't it? It's, uh, it's like a little... Kind of rail shooter almost, I'd call it. It's a little shooting game where you run like side to side, blasting stuff that's in front of you. It's good fun. And one that I've yet to play. It's a Tamagotchi game, I think. I can't remember what the actual thing is. It must say it says it on there somewhere. Tamagotchi something. I can't remember. But yeah, out of them, the only one you really want to buy is uh, Sin and Punishment. <laughs> So that's it. Finally got to the end of the collection. I think that is all of my N64 collection. Hope it's other than, oh, I'll say what the uh, car only ones are. Um, I think I'm down to two car only games. One being Superman 64, um, which every time I see a box come up for sale, I might as well just sell the buy a, like an entirely boxed one and then sell a car to get most of the money back. So there's no point in buying a box for it. And the same with I was winning on an auction the other day, uh, or yesterday, but I got sniped right at the end for a box for F-Zero, um, but again, it was getting to the point that I might as well just buy another copy in a box and sell the cart, and it would work out better, so I don't know. But yeah, I'm slowly but surely still picking up 64 stuff. Um, only try to do it if I find good deals on stuff now, because it's just it's too crazy on the price, isn't it? But yeah, it's as I said, it's not the biggest N64 collection ever, and it's not the the cleanest N64 collection because, as I said, not not a mint collector. But I think I've done pretty well over the years for the stuff I've found. So yeah, let me know what you think of it. I will bugger off now. Have fun, people. Bye.